Hi, this is Emily Lee, part of Art from the Heart, and this video features the So Lucky stamp set and coordinating dies from Neat and Tangled. I'm pairing it with my favorite nut, which is now back in stock at Neat and Tangled, Ellen Hudson, and Simon Says Stamp. I can't help but say that everyone should own this squirrel set. It's adorable and can be used year-round for many occasions. I'll be making a longer card that is three and a quarter inches by six and a half inches. This will accommodate both the large scripted sentiment and the little squirrel seen below it. I want the boy squirrel to be giving a gift to the girl squirrel and I try out the smallest of the clovers. It looks about the right size and you'll see that I go through all the stages of stamping and die cutting, but in the end I don't use it because the lines are too thick and don't work well with the squirrels. I'm going to heat emboss a two colored sentiment with zing embossing powders in aqua and leaf. After I close the lid to pick up the stamp, I place a piece of masking paper down. I'm going to roughly stamp a mask of the script so I can cut it apart and use it to create a mask that will help heat emboss the sentiment in two colors. It doesn't matter how this looks because it's just a mask. I want the word lucky to appear in green, but since it's attached to the word two, then I have to stamp them both in green. I cut away the other words and leave lucky two to use as a mask on the stamp itself. I cover up those words and tape the mask right onto the lid of the Misty. Then I ink up the stamp with Versamark Watermark ink and remove the mask just before stamping onto the watercolor panel. This Fabriana watercolor cardstock is very textured with deep grooves so thicker images and sentiments don't stamp well on it, meaning it's difficult to get full ink coverage even with a double inking. There will be bare spots but I'll fix that later. Even though we're having unusually mild temperatures, it's still winter because even though I use the magic powder bag, there's a lot of static and I have to use a brush to remove the excess powder before heat setting. I have this tiny brush that I keep around just for this purpose. It comes in handy once in a while and does a great job. Now I'm ready to stamp the remaining words which will be heat embossed in green. I use my magic powder bag again and cover up the already stamped portions using the two pieces of the mask that I had cut away in the beginning. Then I ink up the stamp twice to get as much ink on the cardstock as possible. The aqua parts seem to pick up ink and embossing powder better than the leaf parts. The leafy green areas have gaps which I'll fix later with the Versamark watermark pen. After I stamp and heat emboss both the squirrels and the clover, I use the brush end of the watermark pen to fill in the holes where the leafy green embossing powder didn't reach. Then I'll reapply embossing powder and heat emboss. When I first started stamping, I only had the watermark pen, but when I bought the ink pad I found it handy to also have the watermark pen. They sort of go hand in hand. Now I'm ready to start watercoloring the squirrels. I apply some water to each image and then start adding color. I've chosen two grays and a brown to make them look like the brindle squirrels in my backyard. Our squirrels used to be either gray or black, but now they're an in-between color, sort of light brown with bits of tan and black. The colors I'm using are pumice stone, hickory smoke, and frayed burlap. I did end up shading the clover, but I didn't end up using it on the card, so I've cut out the coloring of that piece from this video. Trying out the card with the squirrel holding the clover confirms that it doesn't jive because the lines are so much thicker. I try the branch from the My Favorite Nut set and it doesn't seem like a really good gift for the girl squirrel so I decide to use the acorn with the heart tag. After stamping and heat embossing the acorn, I can't be bothered to get out my craft sheet again so I just watercolor straight from the ink pad. The image is small enough that I can do this. I use crushed olive and peeled paint to shade the top of the acorn to match the green part of the embossed sentiment. Then I use evergreen bough to color in the bottom of the acorn to match the aqua part of the sentiment. Then I bring in milled lavender to color in the little heart tag. The little acorn turns out to be the perfect gift. Now I'm using milled lavender to sponge around the edges of the watercolor panel. Then I use the tube of my ranger mister to flick water around the sponged edge. The water reacts with the distress ink and creates white spots, which I love. It just adds more visual interest to the sponged edges. I sped up the drawing process with my heat tool and now it's time to assemble the card. I start by adhering the panel directly to the card base. I attach the acorn to the squirrel's paw with a glue dot and determine their final position on the card. As the squirrels are hovering, I decide that they need an anchor since they're quite far from the bottom of the card. I'm going to pull out the grass stamps from Lumberjack Love and stamp a few blades of grass between the squirrels and on both sides. When the grass has been stamped, I can press the squirrels into their final positions on the card. At this point, I could call the card done, but I wanted to add some little hearts above the squirrels. I'm going to use the tiny solid heart and small open heart from the Lumberjack Love set 
and I'll stamp them in milled lavender to tie into the collar from the sponged edges and the little heart tag on the acorn. Now my card is done. The So Lucky stamp set was designed for St. Patrick's Day, but I hope I've convinced you that it can be used year-round. Danielle's handwriting stands on its own, but it was fun and necessary to pair it up with Elena's adorable squirrels. If you're looking for either of these stamp sets, they're both in stock at a handful of online stores, all of which are linked below and on my blog. Be sure to visit my blog for stills and more inspiration. Thanks so much for watching!